the garage. So uh, we're gonna get into what I'm packing for Surges and kind of you know what I'm bringing, why I'm bringing it, and then I'm gonna pack the bike, show you what it looks like, all ready to go. Uh, and mine is putting water into my uh, my containers, uh, basically be set up ready to go. So uh, the way I'm going to Surges is I am going over seven days. Um, that includes a trip there and back, so I'll only actually be at Sturgis for about 72 hours for three days. Um, it's kind of a short trip, unfortunately. I just don't have the time uh, with, you know, job, family. You know, I'm not going to be able to do the whole full up seven day Sturgis experience with travel there and on the way back. So uh, the way we're going to get about it, uh, or go about it, sorry, is to uh, do two days there arrive the morning uh, the morning after or the morning of the first day uh, go do whatever rides whatever check in the campground um, I will be uh, staying at the Buffalo chip uh, so that is kind of cool I'll get to stay at a nice like place like venue uh, a venue for uh, entertainment maybe on drinks party life whatever um, as well as I'll do you know all the other stuff so but I'll make a video about that separately uh, what I am going to do though um, is, like I said, go over everything and pack it and uh, kind of show you how I'm going about it. And then when I get back from Sturges, uh, I will uh, kind of do a little review of what I brought, what I should have brought, what I shouldn't have uh, brought, uh, etc. So, um, but like I was saying, it'll be two days hard riding there, uh, do three days, and then it'll be a three day easier ride back. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do an iron butt on the way there or not, but you know. We'll see what happens, see how high I feel, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so let's get into it. All right, so starting over here, I have my uh, little toolkit. I uh, bought the toolkit off Amazon and filled it with my own stuff. Um, right here, I got three quarter inch sockets, and they go in order from three fourths all the way down to uh, three eighths. And then in addition, I have an Allen key socket. Uh, it is a uh, HW8. And then I have two torch bits. Um, I have the T27 and the uh, T25. That's just to work on fairing, whatever. Uh, so that's in this part here. And then I have a three quarters inch extension, uh, adjustable wrench, box cutter, tire inflator, I'm sorry, tire pressure uh, gauge. I have 10 through 13, sorry, 10 through uh, 15 metric. Uh, wrenches with flex head uh, uh, ratchet on the other side and then I have 3 eighths to uh, 5 eighths of the uh, standard on the same thing. I have a long extended magnetic screwdriver, uh, flat head screwdriver, mallet with a soft and hard end, regular hammer, I have needle nose pliers, regular pliers, um, uh, snips, one fourth inch uh, flex head ratchet, uh, two sets of Allen keys, one metric, one standard, um, and then I have these here, which are the bits with socket uh, adapters for three quarter and uh, one fourth. So there's the torque bits and then the Allen keys. Um, needle nose vice grip, um, three quarter inch flex head uh, ratchet here. Really like this one's my favorite. And then uh, I have a screwdriver that accepts different bits for the ones you saw, plus I have extras that have different uh, screwdriver heads and stuff like that on them. Uh, and these right here, there's three of those, they just have different little bits on them. Uh, moving on, or moving down I should say, uh, I have this throttle addiction, uh, fuel reserve bottle, it's 50 ounces, it's just the just, uh, the just in case, ran out of fuel. Uh, not a gas station that has uh, premium, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is the holder for it right here. Then, uh, based off of some of the other uh, YouTubers, they have this. Uh, it's a Fantic uh, tire inflator. So here's the tire inflator. It's fully charged. Here's the charger, the nozzle, and the bag. Um, I have two canteens here, one quartz, um, basically just water to use, stuff like that for a jet boil that I'll get to in a minute. Um, and just like daily drinking. Camp stool, uh, just a little tri-fold stool. Uh, I have my Harley rain gear right here, top and bottoms. Uh, I have Oakley iPro, um, so I have the clear lens on it right now. 
and then I have a dark lens as well for the sunglass option. Uh, this is required just from my research on surges. Uh, you have to have a clear lens when riding at night or a yellow, so that, that'll take care of that. Um, I have a tire inflator, I'm oh, sorry, not tire inflator, battery uh, start right here. Um, so this is the uh, NOCO Boost uh, Plus. Got this on Amazon, it's like $80. Has a USB outlet so I can charge my phone or whatever. This is where it charges. And then uh, this is where the uh, actual terminals here kind of plug into. So I've never used this brand or heard of it, but it had a lot of good reviews. Uh, in addition, it also has a light. Um, so here's the uh, battery terminal connector right there. It also comes with a USB cigarette charger, which is good for the street glide because it does have that USB uh, port on it. And then I'll shift you down so we can keep going. All right, so moving on down, I have a camel back right here. Um, I'm going to attach this to the back of the, uh, or I'm sorry, onto the front of my uh, three-day assault pack over there, uh, so that way I can drink water on the road. Because uh, I don't have a cup holder, and also I just, you know, it'd be nice to like just stay hydrated while on the road. Uh, I have a Screaming Eagle um, rain sock for my air, uh, air cleaner uh, for when it rains. I have a tire patch kit right here uh, with everything I needed. I got this from, uh, I wanna say, eBay, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I got my jet boil right here in the jet boil. I got a lighter and a stand, as well as the, uh, the attachment right here. And then it has a little cup um, on the bottom. Really love this. Take this with me uh, to uh, the field and stuff like that. I have the fuel for it here, whole full one. Um, I have instant coffee, sugar, and creamer all in their own individual waterproof uh, Ziploc bags inside of a Ziploc bag. So I got coffee in the mornings on the road, whatever I need. Um, especially for because I'm tent camping. I have a thermos right here, cold weather gloves, warm weather gloves right here from Odin. Uh, I have a inflatable sleeping mat right here, tent right here. Um, this is a pretty big tent, it's like a two person, really it's like a two and a half person tent. Uh, I say two and a half because like me, my wife and one of my sons could probably fit into it. Uh, plus the rain fly goes over and covers like some of the ground so I can put some of my gear in and not have to worry about getting wet. Um, all right, moving on down. Uh, I have this flashlight, so it's a lantern for when it's nighttime. Uh, inflatable camp pillow, rechargeable fan. Plus, I can just plug it into one of my uh, two battery packs here, uh, so I don't get super hot at night. Uh, two powerful battery chargers. Uh, each of these can charge my iPhone about two and a half times. Uh, iPhone charger, batteries for my headlamp here. Um, has uh, red and white lenses, um, and then uh, waterproof matches just in case. Uh, some parachute cord or 550 cord, uh, mainly to attach this fan to the top of the tent. And then my AirPods, so I can listen to music at night, watch YouTube videos, whatever the case may be. Uh, getting into my three-day assault pack, so. Um, I have a Wobie in here, in this pocket, as my blanket, it's right this thing right here, I know it's hard to see because it's all camo, but it's right there. Um, and then I have an uh, extra pair of jeans, several shirts, underwear, socks, shower shoes, you name it, all in there. Um, not to pull that out, that's person dependent. Uh, over here, I have my detachable luggage rack. Um, and it's just a you know Harley Davidson one. Uh, in here I have uh, aside from what you see on the outside, I have my motorcycle cover. That way I can waterproof whatever items I need to on the bike. It won't cover the whole bike with the sissy bar, uh, but it'll cover a lot of the stuff. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm bringing. Um, so now what I'm going to do is kind of package it. Uh, I think this is going to be everything that I possibly need. Uh, bringing a lot of water uh, because I have the jet boil for instant coffee. Bringing some of my own food, plus it'll save me a lot of money because uh, it is going to be very expensive. Seven days of eating out, 
uh, versus bringing some food, uh, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, essentially time lapse the uh, the packing of the bike, so you can see kind of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and uh, what it looks like at the end. We'll go over it. So see you in a minute. So I took a long time, the first time packing it out, uh, but let's take a look at it and kind of go over it with you and, and kind of where everything went, how I got it set up, and uh, kind of how I'm gonna tackle it. All right, so I have my fuel reserve here, uh, easy to quick detach right here, just undo it, pulls off. Uh, I got my trunk here, um, secured on the luggage rack. Uh, the camping stool here, uh, attached directly to the sissy bar. And then I have the uh, camelback right here uh, attached to the uh, trunk, um, sandwiched between the uh, back, uh, the uh, my three-day salt pack and my uh, camelback there, uh, so it's secure. And then I secured the nozzle here so I can even get a quick, easy grab uh, with the bungee cord, um, so that way it doesn't fly away in the wind and all that kind of dumb stuff. Um, so. In this side here, the saddlebag, I have my woobie, my tent, uh, my pillow, and then a canteen. Uh, just quick access in case I need some water real quick for that pots on the camelback, coffee, whatnot. Uh, all the food is really accessible right here, which would be good for the road. I'll just open this up, pull a little meal out, close it back, eat it, throw the trash away at whatever gas station. And then uh, on the other side, I have all of my bike gear. So this is where uh, my rain gear is, gloves, hot and cold weather, tire patch kit, tool kit, battery starter, tire inflator, um, uh, iPro, rain sock, all that stuff is um, really quick, easily accessible should I need it. Um, and then all the way down here is the Um, tire inflator, so all that's easily accessible should I need it. As you saw, I pulled everything out, put it right here in less than 10 seconds. Yeah, so it just closes right back. I have access to everything I need should something happen on the side of the road. Uh, the only thing that's not packed away right now is the little fan thing I had, it's charging still. Um, but looking at the Looking at the bag here, so I have uh, one, uh, the orange one here, the, uh, the, uh, the orange bungee cord here is to the sissy bar, so it's actually secured to the bike. And then as you see, it, it shakes the whole bike. Um, then the yellow one is wrapped around attached to the trunk. So I kind of, uh, and on the, it goes around everything. Uh, so everything's kind of sucks into itself. Um, the only thing that's not like super, super secure is the fuel right here. It's just growing around the outside. Um, but with uh, the camelback, I actually attached the camelback to the fuel here for little uh, securing straps. So that way the camelback being sandwiched in, it's not going to go anywhere. And as you can see, yanking on it, nothing's happening. Um, so yeah, everything. That I'm taking is right here. Now that I got it all packed away, the only thing I gotta do, like I said, is fill up the camel back, uh, which is pretty easy. I just take the bag off and I can directly fill it on the bike. I don't have to get off, so I can just take a gallon, fill that up right there, just take the thing off, fill it up. Um, and then all I'm doing is take my bag on and off. Uh, but I only have to do that every night because more than one camel back a day is a little excessive for just riding. Um, in addition to that, my two canteens, um, so I gotta fill those up. Uh, but yeah, so the waterproof liner on the outside of the bag here will keep most everything waterproof. The back side isn't covered uh, by the liner and a little bit sticking out like uh, right over here. Um, right over here is not covered uh, and right over there. But with most of the rain coming this way, hitting the front, uh, and then all the stuff covering it on the back, I feel pretty good about uh, the stuff not getting soaked. And then when I stop for the night or whatever the case may be, 
Uh, I have my motorcycle cover that I can take and put all the way onto the bike, all of this stuff here. Uh, it won't reach everything probably because the sissy bar is so high, um, but it will cover most of it so the seat won't just get soaked in the morning dew or soaked in the rain and my gear won't get soaked in the rain, saddlebags will be covered, uh, all of that stuff. So, uh, but yeah, with that being said, um, I got everything packed up, ready to go. Uh, it's going to be 1,600 miles there and then 1,600 back, so 32 total just there and back. Not to include seeing, you know, uh, go Needle's Eye or Marsh or whatever I plan on doing there. Um, but yeah, with that being uh, said as well, I will do a review about how all this worked and issues I had. Should I brought extra stuff? Should I not brought other stuff? Uh, to kind of give you a good picture. So uh, if you like what you see here and you want to uh, see more, please like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned. I'm going to post some more sturdy stuff uh, after the rally um, as well as maybe... Um, Post some pictures of stuff, or not maybe, but definitely post some pictures of stuff on my Instagram, uh, Bikes with Barthes, so go check that out, and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.